Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Washington Ohide Foundation Executive Director, Mike Manitas. What a beautiful day it is, both the weather and, and this occasion. Thank you all for joining us for our 13th annual Washington Archie Service Awards. Before we pay tribute to these four remarkable servicemen, we would like to take a moment to recognize a few people in the crowd who will not be participating in the program. First of all, we have representing the government of Greece, the Chargé of the Embassy of Greece, Fialvaros Bizakis. He and Greece's defense attaché, Colonel Thomas Vlahopoulos, who will be presenting an award in the program, are joined today by 16 members of the Greek Armed Forces. Thank you for being here. Representing the government of Cyprus, we have the Cyprus defense attaché, Lieutenant Colonel Andreas Andreou. And while we always had wonderful representation of this event over the years from various countries, we have a new record this year, 28 different countries beyond Greece and Cyprus that are represented here today. They include Armenia, Australia, Austria, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Bulgaria, Canada, China, the Czech Republic, Denmark, Georgia, Germany, Hungary, Italy, Jordan, Korea, Morocco, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Nigeria, and Norway, Portugal, Singapore, Slovenia, South Africa, Thailand, UAE, United Kingdom, and Uruguay. Thank you all for being here to celebrate with us and for your service. We'd also like to thank the folks who make today possible with their generous support of our foundation, our sponsors. Our gold sponsors, Kalamos Investments, the Asiotis family, and Manitos and Manitos. Our silver sponsors, Libra Philanthropies and Pawn and Lynn Peters, and our bronze sponsors, the Harris Pappas family, Jerry and Judy Wranglis, Atlantic Bank, the Stratakis family, Zachary and Lou Vinius. Thank you all for your support to help make this happen year after year. We'd also like to recognize the family of our honorees today. It's quite a great turnout this year. We have with guest Georgie Lynn from Delaware, Georgia Pires. We have Georgia, thank you for being here. Our honorary Harris Pappas, he's got a family here that includes his brother Chris and sister-in-law Maria. Now, 11 years ago, Maria was behind this podium because 11 years ago, we honored her father for his service in World War II, Brigadier General, Brigadier General Mike Kokinos. Uh, Chris and Maria and Pappas family, thank you for being here. And then there's the Stokides family, 16 total that have come from far and wide. 16 and growing, I should say. I have some last minute additions, but I'd particularly like to recognize William Stokides' four daughters sitting here in the front, Theodora, Octavia, Thea, and Roxanne, and George Stokides' daughter, Mary, and wife, Helen, a young 93 years old. They're all with us today. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you all very much and enjoy the program. Please welcome Washington Ohide Foundation founder and president, Andrew Manitas. Well, thank you all for coming. Uh, today, we add these five men to the distinguished honorees who preceded them at this ceremony. Among such past honorees, is presidential nominee and U.S. Senate Majority Leader Bob Dole, the first American to orbit the Earth as an astronaut, Senator John Glenn, and many others. Amid this majestic World War II memorial, we all must realize something beyond World War II. The bullets fired at the greatest generation on the beaches of Normandy carried no more disability and death than the bullets fired in Korea, Vietnam, and in other wars. We must realize that those bullets that were fired were also faced with precisely the same amount of courage and sacrifice as the greatest generation. Simply putting on the uniform carries much greater danger than most realize. For example, 
few realize that the number of soldiers killed in wartime by something other than the enemy's bullet is roughly one-fourth of those who are killed in battle. And the profound devastation senator sen soldiers are risking for themselves and their loved ones was brought home to me at this ceremony by a father who was notified that his son had been killed. He said, before walking into my home to bring this horrific news to my wife and children, I stood at the front door for a moment. I watched their lighthearted and carefree joy and realized that after they learned what I knew, our lives would never be the same. So today we honor those who are here. Thank you and congratulations.